Hey, get inspired, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Life Inspired. We are so excited that you would tune in. You can watch and share and like and subscribe on YouTube, Facebook, inspiredhomes.com, and we thank you for that. If you've never watched before, Life Inspired is always about how and why people are following Jesus. So there's like life was going along, there's some kind of a dot, 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 and then God moment in your life, and then now you're walking an inspired life. So our guest today is Chelsea. Cia Ernina, thank you so much from TJ21 Media Group. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me. I cannot wait to hear this story. I do not know anything about your story, Chelsea. So what we usually like to do is ask, um, what was life like before the turning point? What was, you know, maybe your history, your childhood, something like that. What was life like before God stepped in and did something? Yeah, so I was born and raised Christian. Okay. Um, and I was in a very faith-devoted family. Um, and it all started with my grandfather. Okay. And he is such, he was such a huge man of God. Um, he was really my inspiration throughout my whole life. Um, and when we came to the States, my family and I came here from Indonesia, they, we were really just trying to find something new here, finding a better life from Indonesia. And my grandfather would come and visit every now and then. Okay. And he was an evangelist, and so he would travel and speak about God. Um, and anyone who met him really just like fell in love with his passion, Aww. fell in love with his love for God. And it was really cool to see how God used him in every single way. And um, I remember when I was, I think, eight or nine at the time, um, and him and my grandmother came and visited the States. And he went to speak for our church. Um, and it was this huge seminar. A lot of people came. Um, and he was mid-sentence. He was just talking about how much God really loves us. And then he collapsed and fell backwards. Oh my gosh, in the middle of a sermon. In the middle of a sermon, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> and Ironically enough, he always said that he wanted to die on the battlefield. He wanted to oh, wow. die serving God. Um, and it was really, I mean, it was really sad, <laughs> but it was really inspiring to see how even till the end, he was so committed to God and to loving God and to making sure that the family that he left behind was very um, committed and devoted to God as well. And his dream for his granddaughters and grandson was to become medical professionals. And he felt like that was the best way for us to reach out to as many people as possible to not only serve them physically, but serve them emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. Okay. And so growing up, I always had this mentality, all right, I'm <laughs> I supposed need, to be a nurse or a yeah, doctor. I need to be a doctor, or I need to just be in the healthcare field. This is the way that I, this is, this is what my destiny, this is what I need to do. Okay. Um, and there are, three cousins ahead of me from my grandfather's line. Three cousins ahead of me and they, one by one, they each went to medical school or a dental school. And they're super close to graduating, then they graduated. Then it was my turn. And it was just, I had no idea of any other occupations or it just wasn't an interest of mine. I just mm -hmm. knew medical all the way. Right. Even if it was gonna take 12 to 14 years. Even though you didn't really think you liked it? Right. Yeah, okay. it was just all that I knew, okay. and so I thought I would go for it. Um, and funny enough, um, I was always very ambitious, so I wanted to go to the Ivy League schools. Wow. <laughs> I wanted to um, just be in universities that would make my parents proud. Um, but they were really interested in making sure that I went to a Christian university. And that was fine, but I was just set on, okay, I need to be in Ivy Leagues around the New England area. That's where I was from. That's where I'm from. Okay. And so um, I remember in high school, I applied to BU, to Syracuse, to UConn. And they're not like extremely Ivy League, like Harvard, but they were pretty up there in terms of New England. And I remember applying to every single one of them, and I got to all of my dream schools. And I told my mom, okay, I'm here, I want to get in there, um, it's expensive, but it's gonna, it's gonna be fine, we'll make it happen. And I put in my deposit, we toured the school, and my mom said, actually, you need to be closer. And 
So then we checked out another school, um, put my deposit there, and by this time it was already July, June, July. Before um, your freshman year. Before my freshman year. Wow, okay. And she was like, okay, this is the school then. A month went by, she says, actually, we officially want you to be in a Christian school, in our denominational school. So I was very frustrated, I didn't know why, but I was like, okay. At this point, it was very late in the game to apply to any school. Right. Um, but when we connected with our denominational universities, they were really interested in getting me in. But I didn't hear back from them until, well, one school I didn't hear back until three weeks before school. school started. Oh, three weeks before, okay. Yeah, three weeks before okay. my freshman year would start. And this was the specific, this is a school in Ohio that's specifically for the medical um, professionals who are interested okay. in medical. And so I went there anyways. <laughs> wow. um, I got their letter. We didn't even put the deposit in. I didn't know where I was going to stay. I didn't know if I would have a dorm. But my parents just said, let's pack up and let's go. So, so off you went to Ohio from New England. Right. Okay. And when we were on the way there, it was already two days before school officially started. Okay. We showed up, they were like, perfect, you're on our name anyways, let's get you in, let's get you checked in and everything. So I was really excited because I was um, on track for a bachelor's in human biology okay. with an emphasis in pre-med. And I was very gung-ho, I was very ambitious, I watched um, Grey's Anatomy all the time and I Aww. wanted to be um, Christina Yang from Grey's Anatomy. Okay. And I just gave my all. And I remember freshman year, I was so excited. There was about 20 of us that started, it's a very small school. 20 of us started um, with human biology. Second year, it was organic chemistry and physics that we had to take at the same time. And second year, first day of class, there was about 12 or 13 of us. And this was expected. People said, medical career isn't for everybody. If the route that you want to go on is to become a doctor or a surgeon, expect some like people to drop. So I said, okay, that's fine. Um, that year was a very, very hard year for me. I started questioning whether or not this was my passion. I started questioning whether or not this was actually where God wanted me to go. And whenever I would voice my opinions, my thoughts, my beliefs to my parents, they would always just say, no, 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 you're just, you, just, you're just worried. Yeah, yeah. You're just nervous. Keep on going. This is where God wants you to be. This is where um, your grandpa wanted you to be. You'll, you'll end up becoming like an awesome doctor once you go to Indonesia with your cousins. You can um, serve God in the medical field. Just keep on going. And so I said, okay, let's just keep on trying. So this beginning of my junior year, first day of class, there's about five of us now. Wow. From the original 20. Wow. And at this point, I'm still gung-ho. I wasn't as passionate as I was when I was a freshman, but I thought I'm here. God paved the way for me to be here. He literally made it happen so I could come here, even though it was like three weeks before school started. Um, and so let me just give it my best shot. And that was year, that year was a really, really hard year as well. I was depressed all the time. Oh, I was wow. anxious all the time. Um, and I started wondering if God even existed at the time. Even though it was a, it was a Christian school, I was in the medical field, I still went to church, I was around Christian friends, I was in a Christian community, I just felt so alone. I felt like, even though I asked him, why am I here, what am I doing here, show me if this is the right place for me, and I just heard silence, um, I was just not in a good space. But I kept on going, I kept trying. Um, I went to a mission trip and that and this went, is during your junior year? This or is during my junior year. Okay. Um, and it went really well. And when I went to the mission trip, that's when I felt like I heard God speak for the first time in years. Wow. And so I said, okay, maybe this is the place for me. Um, so the summer after my junior year, I'm preparing to take the MCAT, the DAT, and the GRE, as well as applying to... I remember applying to med schools, dental schools, and PA schools. 
because I said, you know what, even if I don't want to be a doctor, maybe I could be a PA or a dentist and I'll still be in the healthcare field. Um, and I remember spending a lot of money to pay for those exams and to send in applications. And I remember sending in the prereq prerequisite emails to get the committee, committee in the school to sign off, to send me recommendations. I ticked all the boxes and made sure I was ready to go by senior year. Okay. Senior year, first day of class, um, there's two of us <laughs> left. Wow. From the entire 20. class, yeah, from the 20 that started freshman year. I was very surprised because I knew I wasn't the smartest and I wasn't the brightest from that five from freshman year, or not freshman year, from junior, junior year. year. So I was very shocked that they were, that they left, but at the same time I wasn't surprised because it's a hard career. Right. Um, but I thought, you know what, I made it this far. Gotta finish. Right, I gotta finish. First week of the school year was when the PA applications were due. And I hadn't heard back from my professors, hadn't heard back from my, the committee all, some, all summer. So I contacted them. They said, yeah, let's set up a meeting, come by our office. Um, and they sat me down and said, we do not want to write you a recommendation letter. Um, and it still brings me, it still makes me really emotional because I feel like I gave my all. What are all you four talking years. about? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which actually reminds me, so soft, at the end of my sophomore year, I had thought about John, changing. John, we need a tissue box. <laughs> Throw us a tissue box No, sure. that's okay. okay. I had, um, I'm going to try not to cry. Um, I've already been like welled up since your <laughs> first story about your grandpa, so. So, um, at the end of my sophomore year, I really, really, I just thought, okay, maybe I could still be in the healthcare field. I'll just be in business because I was really interested in business. And I made all the application and I filled out all the papers to transfer because there was already a program in the school. I asked my parents, they were like, you know what? She's really sad, she's really disappointed. She is down all the time. Let's approve it. They said, sure. And I, was, I remember being so excited. Okay. Thank you so much. Yep. Um, I remember being so excited, and I remember the day that I was going to go to the office to hand in the papers, I woke up to seven missed calls from my dad saying, no, you are not changing out of this program. You are going to continue and become a doctor. And I remember that just shattered my whole life. So like, that was my what? sophomore year. No. Yeah. yeah, I was like, what are you talking about? I, I don't even have it in me anymore. Oh, so that was back to your sophomore, sophomore year. year. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah. okay, I was confused. I thought we were still in the same year. Okay, <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Um, so yeah, so senior year, Back to like current time senior year, I'm with my um, advisors and the chair of the program. They said, sorry, we just don't think this is right right now. And I was just so disappointed, not just for the fact that they told me that, but it was so, it was more so that I wish if they only told me junior year, or at the end of my junior year, they should have, they most likely would have so known. you'd worked so hard. Right, because then I wouldn't have to pay for all these exams or pay for all these applications. Um, and I could have used that time also to figure out, okay, what, what's my next step then if I'm not going to be able to go to right. med school and dental school and all that. So um, I came back and I was really distraught. <laughs> um, and so I what do you do when you're distraught? Did you call your parents? No, actually, I, I mean, the applications were already rolled in. All that was left is a recommendation letter. Right. So, and the way that the school is set up, we can't individually ask our professor or the professor that we feel like would connect more with us to write the recommendation letter. It was a whole committee huh. that would send it off. Okay. Right. And so, at that point, I said, I'm just going to let them roll in, and I know I'll get a rejection letter, and that's fine. That's what I'm going to go and tell my parents, which I did. <laughs> and um, my whole senior year, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. But since my high school years, I had kept up a blog. And I Interesting. wrote about my journey, um, about going into the med school or med school route. And it's funny because my blog name actually evolved with me. So wow. my blog name since I was in high school was um, Journey to Pre-Med. That was the name of Journey, 
journey to pre-med. Then I remember my freshman year of college, I changed it to anatomy of a pre-med because I was like, this is it. I want this. Um, junior year, <laughs> I actually changed it to the anxious Asian because I was very anxious all the time and I wasn't sure if this is where I wanted to go. Um, and I knew my audience had grown to become people who were all over the world, but they were people who were interested in the medical field, or they weren't sure, but they were just wanting to see what other people thought. And over the years, I built up this audience. Um, and then when I graduated college, my blog and my brand changed to Chelsea. And that was when I felt really um, happy with who I am. And so you graduated with a med degree, pre-med right. degree, okay. Um, so I guess that concludes the first question. Right. So that was kind of what happened before the turning point. So what's the turning point? So I guess the turning point includes the part where they told me that I couldn't get a recommendation letter. But because I had a blog the whole time, I became really savvy with technology, with social media, um, with blogging and copywriting. And when people told me in the online space that I could make a living out of that, I was excited, so I decided to learn more about it. And I got my foot in the door with the marketing department at my school. And I worked there as a work study, and I got really, really excited and passionate about marketing, about social media. So and you didn't even know year, this was gonna grow in you. <laughs> no, I had no idea. I just wrote my blog because I had a journal, but I just really enjoyed like putting it out there. Um, and so at the end of my senior year, I still graduated with my bachelor's in human biology, but I, had n I no longer had a care for medical career. And I was And did really you get excited. the rejection letters that you expected? I did. Yeah. <laughs> I did. Because there were no but recommendations. Okay. Right. And I knew it and I expected it. Um, but throughout that whole year, it was just this process of me really falling in love with marketing, falling in love with social media, learning more and more about how I can use that to make an impact and an income. Um, and I started actually getting my foot in the door with the church, the denomination that I work with, and I started getting marketing opportunities from them. Wow. Um, and I felt like, although God works in different ways, he could have, if I decided to go a different way, he could have used that and still led me here if he wanted. I felt like this was the route that he wanted me to go through because, I mean, there's no, you don't really feel joy if you can't, if you don't know what struggle is, right? Right. And so I felt what it was like to hear silence. I felt what it was like to cry out to God and feel like, feel so hopeless, feel so depressed. Um, but then I could see when everything fell into place, I could see why and how he used me still. Like you had to go do the whole medical thing and have that journey because that gave you the blog that was the stepping stone. I mean, right. like, even though there were the expenses and stuff like that, it was all part of the story. Right. That's yeah. amazing. <laughs> That's so it amazing. Is. It is. And so uh, besides that also, my um, fiance now ended up being there as an intern pastor. And so that's how I met him. And I felt he like... He was where? He was in, he was at in that, that school. school. Mm -hmm. So that's Working where as an intern pastor. Wow. Right. And so I feel like if I didn't also go that route, I wouldn't have met him. Um, so it's been really interesting. <laughs> wow. So how did you guys get from... Now you were in Ohio, right? Mm -hmm. How did you get from Ohio to South Bend? So when I finished my bachelor's in human biology, my parents were happy. Um, but at that point, after I graduated, they finally accepted that medical career had, was not for me yeah, and maybe, maybe God, God had, had different some, plans. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when the church opportunities came in, they were like, okay, you're right. God has different plans. And so I said, I could have kept going and um, I could have done what I do now without having a master's, but I wanted to get a school education for me and what I was passionate about. Cool. And so... Right now, I'm finishing up my master's in communications at Andrews University, and so that's how I ended up here. <laughs> okay. So where yeah. does your fiancé live? So he lives in Andrews University as well. Okay. So he works as a director of a media ministry up there. 
Wow, interesting. Yeah. So exciting. I, I am so delighted to share this story. There are so many kids. I have a friend that runs an organization. She's been on the couch before. She runs an organization called Career Analysis Organization mm -hmm. that's trying to help students figure out things before they go spend all this college money on the wrong field. Yes. Um, yeah. I feel like for you, God let your parents think that the whole time because your whole blogging journey and stuff like that, he could have changed your parents' hearts sooner mm -hmm. and he didn't Right. because I think it was part of your story. I, I, I feel like, you know, hey, kids, listen, it's okay. Even if you don't think your parents know what they're talking about, <laughs> you can trust God to change their heart when the mm -hmm. time is right yes. because he can use this wrong journey for the right destination. Yes. You know, yeah. so um, so I, what an exciting story. Can can yeah. we ask the crowd that if, um, you know, the viewers, if they would like to have coffee with you, would you meet with somebody to yeah, talk absolutely. to them about their lives and stuff? That's mm -hmm. awesome. I am so delighted you would share your story. Thank you. So can I d ask one more question? We always like to know, how do you stay inspired every day? What do you do to stay connected so that you can hear that voice instead of that silence? What do you do? What does that look like for Chelsea? Yeah, so um, I know that God works in mysterious ways, and even when we cry out to Him when He's silent, it doesn't mean that He doesn't want to talk to us, it doesn't mean that He doesn't love us, and it doesn't even mean no, it could just mean, wait, I have something bigger and better, you just need to go through this first. And because of that, I have to consistently remind myself, not only through the Bible and through prayer, but I have to do something physical to remind myself that He's still there. and. Um, that I'm, since I'm a daughter of a king, I want to treat myself and my life as if I'm a daughter of a king. So what I actually do is when I wake up in the morning, um, I put my hand over my chest and I say, Chelsea, I love you, and if I don't, God loves you. Aww. And I do that every morning. Um, and it really helps me to stay strong throughout the day. That's very cool. I love that. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. We love having you here every week. Remember, you can always tune in on Monday nights at 7.30, and you can see the back ones on YouTube, Facebook, inspiredhomes.com. But share this story. Chelsea, somebody needs to know Chelsea's story. So if you know somebody that needs to hear it, please share it with them. And if you've got stories that you know need to be um, told from the red couch, we'd love to hear about those too. So message us either, you know, again, YouTube, Facebook, or inspiredhomes.com. Thanks, you guys. Have a great week. Bye-bye.